Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at how we create a form with Modblazer and also take the data from the form and insert it directly into a SQL server database. So in this example, we're going to insert a product to our SQL server database. So in name, we could just go and type test and the price could be 100 and then the year could be 2020 and we will tap this off it is if it's available or if it's not you could go and put a text so you could see it but then we say insert and in this case we doesn't get a response but we will go and integrate that also so inside sql server management studio you can see here that i have a dummy data a database and inside here i have a table called products and it's here we just put the test so let's go and make everything from scratch and we'll go and use mud blazer to set up the form and we will use entity framework to set up the database connection and we will do it in .NET 8. So first of all, let's go and open Visual Studio 2022, create a new project and it will be a Blazor web app, say next. And it doesn't matter what we call the project. So we just say next, it will be .NET 8. We will use interactive render mode as server and we will use the interactivity location, uh, the global one. So we say create. So we first of all want to go and set up everything. So let's start with the connection to the database. We will right click the project and say manage NuGet packages. We'll go to browse and we will say entity framework. And then the package we're looking for is actually this one, Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. And we will also go and install this Microsoft Entity Framework Core tools. So just go and install these two packages. It's important that you take a 8 point something version because that is set up to run with .NET 8. So we just take the newest in this case, which is 8.0.2 and install and say, I accept. Also do it with the tools just so we can go and add some migration. And we can go and update the database directly from our package manager console. We will then over in our project, go and right click and want to make a new folder called model. And it's from in here. We have our product model and also our app DB context. So first of all, let's go and right click the model and say, add a new item. And this should be called app DB context. You could call it whatever you want, but it's just to keep track on that this is the DB context file. So we say add and we do want to go and extend this app DB context from the DB context itself. And this DB context is actually coming from the package, the SQL server package we just installed. So at the top here, we have to say using Microsoft.EntityFramework call, then we know where this come from and just to speed things up a bit i'll just go and copy and paste all this configuration here so basically what we have is a i configuration called configuration and then we take an i configuration and dependency inject into our app db context and take that configuration into our con global configuration inside app db context here and the reason we do all this is because we want to go and take the connection string from the app settings.json instead of putting it directly into this file. So inside our on configuring, we can now go and take the options, say use SQL server, and then we can use our configuration to go and get the connection string. And we just call it database connection string inside app settings.json. And we will just go and create that in a moment. And the last thing I want to add in here is actually the products table so in just a moment we will go and add this product model into our project also inside our models folder this product will go and hold all the properties inside a product such as the name the year and if it's available or not and when we do it like this we can when we have created this product uh, object we can go and use entity framework to actually migrate to the SQL server. But first of all, let's go and create the database connection string inside the app setting.json. So click on that. And the thing we want to add in here is this connection strings. So inside the connection strings, we will go and create a database connection string, which is the one we reference to right here. And we need to remember when we say get connection strings, 
then it will go and look at this connection strings first and then will it will go and take the name that we specify and go and look for it inside uh, so it's important that you call this connection strings else it don't know where to look so the connection string you have to set the server which is your computer's name in this case you should be able to find it inside the microsoft sql server management studio it should be the top here where it said this desktop at me and then the whole string here just not uh, what is inside the parentheses then you have to specify a database that we want to connect to in this case i say dummy data and i will actually call it dummy data one so we can go and create that in just a moment you have to set the trusted connection to true and also the trust server certificate to true. So let's go into the SQL Server Management Studio and go and create the database. So on the databases here, just go and right click, say new database, and let's call it for dummy data one, which was what I called it. And we say, okay. So now we have it down here, just the empty database with no tables inside. So the last thing we need here inside our app DB context, we just need to create this product. So in our models folder here, we can right click, we can go and say add, and then we want to add a item and it should just be called product and say add. And you can already see that it suggests that we make a public integer called ID and it should be a get and set. So that is correct. We can just go and hit tab on this one and then go and create a new one. You can see it will actually also say this should be a name and it's a string. So that's also okay. And let's go and make one more. So in this case, we actually want a price. So we can go and say price and that should be a double. And then let's go and put another thing, which is the year. So what year was this product from? And uh, could be an integer, could also be a string. It's all up to you. And finally, we will go and make the available. So basically to say, is this product available? And it should be a bull. Then we could go and create some data annotations to say if the property is required. So let's just go and say required. And you can see it will come from system.componentModel.data annotations. So just go and hit enter on that one and it will go and put it in here. Then we can go and take the required again because we also want a price and maybe the year. It really doesn't matter, but we want to know if it is available also so this is basically our model our product model but we still need one thing before we can add the migration which is going to the program.cs file then we need inside our builder we need to say services and add a singleton which should be the app db context it should be a little b here so app db context then it will automatically go and take it from the models folder. So now we should be able to go and add a migration to our database. So go to the package manager console and we say add migration and we call it something. And in this case, we will call it init because it's the first migration we have. You can call it whatever you want, but it's just to say that it is initialized and we say enter, then it should be succeeded and you will get to this migration file, which we should actually just go and say update database, which means that we just run this migration file. You can also see we got the migrations folder over here with the actual migration, which is this file. So just go and say update database and hit enter. And that one should also succeed. So if we go back to SQL Server Management Studio inside our dummy data one uh, database here, we can go and hit refresh and then open it and see that we have the table and now we have the products table. So if you right click, you can say this design and then you can see all the things that we set inside our project. So now let's go and set up Mudblazer because now Entity Framework should be set up correctly. So we can just go and close all these files and then inside our NuGet management here, we can go and say Mudblazer to install Mudblazer. And it should just be the first one here and the latest version say install say i accept and then we need to go inside our component here the imports file and go and say that we want to use modblazer so just say using 
and then mud blazer and i will do this a little bit quick because it's not what the video is about but it's just so you can see how everything is set up from scratch so i'll go to the app.razor file add the style sheets here and the font adding the modblazer.js file going to our program.cs file and go and add the builder inside our builder services go and add the add mod services and then go to our layout and inside our main layout here we just want to go and put the mod theme provider so now we should be good to go and what I want to do is to go to pages and actually want to go and add another Razor component, which I will just call insert and say add. So this is going to be the page where we have our form, where we can insert data to the database. So at the top, we need to say that it's a page and that it has the URL slash insert. We do then want to go to our nav menu to just make a link so we can actually come to this page. Just go and take one of the existing ones here and go and copy and paste it. And then it will not be a href to weather. It will be a href to insert. And we will also give it a name that is insert. So if we just go and test it now, we do now have a tab over in the menu called insert. And it's here we're going to make the form. So to prepare this page, we want to go and say that we want to use modblazer. And we will also go and use our models folder inside our project here so we first say project name and then dot model because it is inside here that we have our product model so let's go and remove this insert uh, headline and what we want to use is the edit form and when we use edit form we need to remember that it is actually still blazer component it is not a mod blazer component but we can go and use it with the mod blazer ui components and i basically think that this is the most simple uh, way to go and handle the data inside a blazer web app because basically what we want to do is go and say model and then we want to specify which model do we want to use then we want to go and make an add sign and just say product because we just want to go and make a variable called product that is actually a product from our object then we also want to go and add the on valid submit and again say on valid submit which is going to be the method that is going to be run when the edit form can see that everything is okay so let's go and make a mod grid and then what I did in the setup that you saw before is going to add a mod item and then we will go and add a mod text field for every property that we have in our product. So we will go and create a label and in this case we want to say that it is the name and then we do want to go and bind this value. So we say bind and then say value and put it equal to again it should be the product here that we have up here and then we say dot name but because we haven't defined this product yet inside our code here then it really don't know what it is and it will go and make all these errors here so let's go and inject the app db context and the way we do that is just by saying inject then we say app db context and we say that we want to use it as db context inside our code here so now we can go and say product and we can go and say that this should be the product that we reference to up here and we want to say that this should be equal to a new product so now you can see all the errors is gone because now it actually know what this product is so now we can actually go and take this mod text field and go and copy and paste it a couple of times and then we just want to go and say that this was the price so inside here we can say product and then say price you can see it actually knows what it is we want to write now and then we also want to go and take the year and we say year here and then the last one was actually not a text field that we needed but we need a checkbox so we do say mod checkbox then we again want to go and bind the value to the product dot available because inside the product we have the property available which was a boolean so it knows that this can either be false or true and that is the thing that we can actually use inside a checkbox and finally just go and close it off here so the last thing we need is a mod button so this is going to be our submit button we can go and say that it should display insert and then the important thing is to go and make the button type 
to a button type dot submit so it knows that this is the submit button of this edit form so the last thing we actually need is to go and create this this unvalid submit method so we could go and create this as a private async task oops async and then task and then we of course need to make it a method with the parentheses and then make open and closing brackets so the thing we need now is to take our db context the variable from up here where we take the app db context and then we say that inside our products table we want to go and add the product that we just created and the reason it's created is because we bind all the values from the form here then we will go and say await and say db context dot save changes async and this is what will actually go and update the database so now let's go and test this and we needed to go inside our insert tab here then in name we could just go and say test the price could be 100 and the year 2024 and it is available and then say insert and of course as it is now we have no response whatsoever if it is inserted or if it's not inserted but i think that would be another video i'll go and make a part two for this so that we can also go and create a new tab where we can go and see the data inside a mod blazer table but for this video let's go and see if this is put inside our database so we'll go to the database we will go and click on the database say refresh and open our table and inside the products we want to select top thousand rows and we can actually see that there is nothing in the table so i'll just go and figure out what we did wrong okay so i have been looking through my code and i have been seeing the error it is up here on invalid submit that was not my intentions it should be on valid submit let's go and insert something we say test and just some random data and say insert and let's go back to sql server management studio and let's update again and now you can see it will go to the database so that would be it for this video in the next video i want to show you how you validate your data and get a response so you can see if it is successfully put in the database uh, or if it's not and then also go and display this information inside a mod table so thank you for watching and go and have a nice day bye